This is a EMS update for influenza dated uh, 22 December 2013. We are currently seeing uh, a predominance of H1N1, which is a, a type A influenza virus. And there's been a lot of attention mostly because of some uh, media claims that there's a mystery illness that has claimed several lives uh, in some neighboring counties. Now the tricky thing about this is that the nasal swab that we do for rapid influenza screening only has a sensitivity of 50 to 70 percent. Uh, this means we're going to miss a significant number of patients that actually have flu and the test will be a false negative. Uh, but the rapid test is a good quick screening uh, tool, uh, but if we need a uh, strong diagnosis then uh, there are additional things that we can do, that, uh, but they take longer. They sometimes take several days to get the results back. The uh, Texas Department of State Health Services sent out an alert on the December 20th uh, mentioning that uh, influenza is widespread in Texas and that over 90 percent are this type A H1N1. Uh, this is the same strain as from the 2009 pandemic, so there's no novel influenza strains. There's no significant resistance to the antivirals that we've noticed, and they're continuing surveillance. Now, if you want to track surveillance uh, from flu from a nationwide standpoint, you can go to cdc.gov slash flu slash weekly. And this is where I got some of these data right here. Um, this is mortality uh, for influenza. And you can see on the far right, uh, the little red graph is not exceeding an epidemic threshold. So there is no excessive mortality detected at this time. Uh, although these uh, cases from uh, Montgomery County have created a bit of a buzz, there does not appear to be an unusual number of uh, patient mortality. Here are the four states that are the hottest for influenza activity, uh, and I imagine this will quickly spread uh, throughout the United States, but uh, we're in the uh, middle of the most active zone. The Montgomery County Health District and Public Health uh, website is tracking this as well. They uh, now have stated some confirmed H1N1 cases. Um, and I believe they're trying to do some additional testing uh, to see if the uh, ones that were initially negative will turn up positive for H1N1. So here's some flu facts. Uh, 30,000 to 40,000 deaths per year in the United States, which makes it uh, in the top 10 causes of death, um, usually due to some complications. Uh, patients that have chronic disease are a little bit more at risk, uh, as well as the old being greater than 65 and young less than 2. And then any of these things like diabetes, HIV, cancer, heart disease, COPD can, can increase your risk of complications. So flu is typed is to either a type A or type B. Uh, again, right now we're seeing um, type A. Well over 90% of the cases are type A. And then uh, these type A viruses are classified based off of the surface proteins. So there's a hemagglutinin and a neuraminase. Um, which is the H and the N, and then there's subtypes of those. So depending on which subtypes are seen in the virus, uh, that's how we classify it as H1N1 or H2, you know, N5. Um, and there are 16 H's and 9 N's seen in the, the bird flus. And again, the one we're seeing here that's making people ill is the uh, 2009 H1N1. Here's an example of what the flu virus looks like. Basically, it's a ball or a sphere. Uh, and that has these surface proteins that stick out and those again are the surface proteins that we detect and classify the different types of flu. So what are symptoms? Well, uh, you know, most people know what the symptoms of flu are, you know, just cough, congestion, runny nose, sore throat, fatigue, muscle aches. Um, usually the flu has a fairly abrupt onset. Uh, people are feeling fine then all of a sudden it really hits them like a, a load of bricks. So if we've got patients with an acute Fe uh, respiratory illness that's uh, febrile, meaning a fever greater than 100.5 Fahrenheit, and then one of these other uh, symptoms, then that kind of leads you to think, oh, we've got an acute uh, febrile respiratory illness, uh, which uh, flu is definitely one of those, so it should raise your suspicion. Flu is spread uh, through coughing and sneezing, so these airborne particles as well as uh, touch. So if an infected patient rubs their nose, blows their nose, gets the flu virus on their hand, then touches a hard surface like a tabletop or doorknob, uh, that virus can remain viable for several hours and then you can touch it and then become infected. Incubation is typically a couple days uh, and then we have these outbreaks. The outbreaks typically uh, run hot and heavy for about six to eight weeks and then sort of uh, get back to baseline. 
So from an EMS guidance standpoint, um, here are the, the CDC recommendations that you say six feet away from patients and bystanders uh, while assessing for potential flu. Um, and then once you have to care for the patient, you have to get up close and personal. Uh, so they recommend that you don some degree of PPE. So that includes like an N95 respirator, eye protection, because again, if coughing and sneezing get in the mucous membranes of the eye, you can become infected. Obviously gloves. Um, and if this were a, a significant pandemic, then you may want to even include a gown, although that may not always be practical. Putting a surgical mask on the patient is also a good idea. So we mentioned that there's no viral antiviral resistance. Uh, there's a couple medications that are used currently, Oseltamivir and uh, Zanamivir. Uh, that's Tamiflu and Relenza are the uh, trade names. Uh, the tricky thing about this is you have to initiate therapy within the first 48 hours or the efficacy of these drugs goes way down. Uh, so if you get ill, you want to get treated quickly or you want to encourage friends and family and patients to get vaccinated or if they develop symptoms to uh, seek treatment early. All right. So in summary, here's what we know. The flu virus that we're currently seeing is a type A H1N1 that is the same strain as the 2009 um, version. Uh, despite some of the media attention, uh, the best data that we have currently is that there is no excessive mortality. Although the, I know that the uh, Texas Department of Health and the CDC are watching this very closely. I've spoken with both uh, on the phone. Uh, there's no antiviral resistance. It's treated with uh, uh, Tamiflu and Relenza. And then when you're caring for patients, please don personal protection uh, equipment, uh, especially gloves and masks. Um, and make sure that you disinfect surfaces so that you take the, the viable flu virus out. Uh, if we've got any additional updates or if anything changes, we'll post uh, an update uh, to this website. Thanks.